So we're going to add the features of uh, barcode scanning to our project. This is a plugin. You can go online and go to any go to any search engine, and you're going to search for the uh, keyword uh, Cordova barcode scanner. So ultimately, behind the scenes, we're using Cordova. And what we want is a barcode scanner. Maybe see Cordova barcode plugin should be the same. I'm going to search for Cordova barcode scanner. We get some results, and the result that we want should be at uh, Cordova plugin for barcode GitHub. See github.com slash phone gap slash phone gap plugin barcode scanner. That's the one. If there's other ones, they may or may not work. This is over here from Wildebeest. This is from Phone Gap, which is basically the official team, because as usual, since it's open source, various companies or, or individuals can create a plugin. So search for Cordova barcode scanner, and you want the result that is <coughs> github.com slash phone gap slash phone gap plugin. Click on that. It's going to take you to GitHub. This is a, this website is a repository of code. People upload code here. Um, big famous projects, small projects. And actually, I'm going to upload ultimately the final results of our code here also, because the code is obviously in the network folder in this room on this campus. But they clean that network folder out every semester. Uh, I could put it up on Blackboard, but Blackboard, as I said, you know, it's going to be accessible basically until Saturday. So unless you save the stuff yourself, it's going to disappear from Blackboard. I'm going to upload the, the work to a, a GitHub account, and I'll let you know where that address is, and I won't take it down. You'll be able to access that code whenever you want, the final version of the project eventually. But we're here at this one, the PhoneGap plugin. There's a lot of stuff. You can skip all of that. Eventually, there's the README documentation installation. We're going to use this once Visual Studio is done in a moment. We're going to add the phone gap dash plugin dash barcode scanner. Remember, in Visual Studio, our config XML file lists all of our details of the project and installed plugins. We're going to add this plugin in a little bit. It works on all devices, Android, iOS, Windows, etc. Going further, there's more than one type of barcode. This also includes QR codes. So QR codes are those, those square ones. Barcodes are like how you've got on the box, or if you look on top of your monitor, that horizontal barcode. There's many other ones also. Uh, different variations, UPC symbols, data matrix, and here it says these are the ones that are readable on different devices. So most of them are readable on all devices. One that stands out here, code 3093, I don't even know what that looks like. We can look that up. But that one cannot be read on iOS, apparently, or the Coda bar on iOS. But obviously the most common ones, QR code and UPC symbols, mm. those are universal. These are the ones, Aztec code, RSS code, and how to use it. We'll see how to use the, this example code in a moment. This is a plugin that will give us the extra feature of being able to scan barcodes. So my Visual Studio seems to be ready now. The first thing we want to do is add the plugin to the project. So I've got the CBDB project open in Visual Studio. 
we're going to double click to open the config XML file. From the left side, we have plugins. The barcode scanner, I don't believe I see it here. It's not a it's not one of these de uh, default or basic ones that most people need, so it's not here. We'd have to add it via custom installation. This is either provide the ID, the file for it, or a GitHub address. The plugin ID, I think, will be the most straightforward because at the very top, the plugin ID is this phone gap dash plugin dash barcode scanner. So you can copy and paste it or we'll type it. We can type it manually. The ID is phone gap dash plugin dash barcode scanner, one word lowercase, and then you go or you click next or whatever that button represents so that it connects with the server to confirm the plugin. So this gives you a little bit of a description of what kind of plugin you're about to add. That seems to check out. It's the, uh, you know, use this to scan different types of barcodes. Great. Compatible with all platforms. Just go ahead and click Add. The left side was just to uh, find it. Make sure you click Add. Question. There is an app that you can find out the barcodes very easily. What is that? There is an app. There is, yeah, but yeah. when you install it on your phone, you can find out all the barcodes. That's true, but we want to add the ability for our app to scan barcodes in our CVDB app. That app that you're saying is a separate app. You go to another app to use that one. I want to be able to scan barcodes in our CVDB app. That's so what this plugin does. How, how we can use it? Um, that is going to be a bit uh, uh, up to you how you want to use it. I'm going to show you how to scan them, but what to do with them. That's going to be more for you to figure out perhaps as an inventory control system. So I want to be able to scan the barcodes of the comics as part of what I'm saving in the database. So if you use that app, it's going to <coughs> collect all <coughs> information about different items. The way that the barcode works in general is that, yeah, you scan the barcode and from a database it matches that barcode is related to this product and then it pulls all the information of that product. So you mean we should have a database in our project and then with our database <coughs> we can check the inventory of our storage or our inventory? That's one way to do it, yeah. We cannot copy-paste that app. It's much more easier. Possibly, but the idea of me showing you adding a custom plugin is because we want to add more features to our app instead of borrowing the features of another app that might not do what we want we will add these features directly to our own app. 
So I've added the plugin. We can uh, we can click save, and you can close the config XML file. We don't need it anymore. We just needed it to add the plugin. The way we will use it is with a little bit of HTML and then a little bit of JavaScript. The HTML will be like the button to activate the barcode scanner. And then the JavaScript will be the code that captures the barcode and does something with it. Let's open the index.html file. In the screen where we save the comics, I also want to add a button uh, to scan the barcode. So we have a, a button down on line 166. This is our form in the Add Comics page. We've got the Submit button saved. We're going to add, uh, first we're going to do the barcode. We're going to add a, a button. And for testing purposes, we're also going to add a field that displays what the barcode was. The person will be able to type the fields then scan the barcode and it'll say we detected this barcode. So before the submit button, add a new line. This is line 165. We'll create a horizontal ruler so we can separate the fields at the top with these buttons we're about to create. I'm going to create an input, an input tag, attribute type text, some barcodes are only numbers, and some barcodes also have symbols. It's a little safer to uh, capture this barcode as text, which includes numbers and letters and symbols. If we had it as type of number, it would only capture numbers, but some barcodes also have symbols. A temporary value, or not value, a placeholder, will be, we'll just say barcode. That'll be removed. When we scan the barcode, the placeholder will go away. And then an ID in, because it's an input barcode. So this input field here will um, temporarily uh, hold the barcode we're about to scan. line, another input, this one of type button, generic button. We had a specialized reset button, we had a specialized submit button. This submit button starts the process of saving all of the data. But I want another button where I can uh, activate the barcode scanner to capture the barcode. So it's a simple generic type button. Value is the text that appears on the button. We'll say we'll have it say scan barcode. And it needs an ID for it to be found or used by the JavaScript. BTN save barcode. So here in the HTML 
form. We've got the um, the button, and we've got the field where the barcode will be displayed. Um, we'll write the JavaScript. Then that data that we're um, now scanning will be added to the, the database. So I'm going to save the HTML file and let's open the JavaScript file, index.js. We need to make objects out of those buttons so that we can use them in JavaScript. So we'll jump to line 144 to our pouch section. We've got the object for the form, for the div that shows the table, and for the button that deletes the whole database. As we did before, I want to add another variable before the database. So add a new line 144. We're creating L B T N save barcode jQuery selector comma quotes pound uh, B T N save barcode. Same as before, we've got a uh, jQuery based variable referencing an HTML node, HTML element. We'll be able to use that in our JavaScript. We'll go to the very end of our code where we've got our event handlers. The event handlers allow us to uh, pay attention to those button clicks, right? So we'll go all the way to the end. Line 400, 401. And go to line 401. Now we can start um, elbtn save barcode. Uh, I guess I called it save barcode, uh, scan barcode, whatever we call it. Scan barcode, save barcode. Save barcode. So btn save barcode dot on the on method. So we've got our, our object on click as we've done before. Once we click on that save barcode button comma, run a function, save barcode. <clears throat> so we should have now a way to detect a click or a tap on that button to start the barcode scanner. The plugin is called barcode scanner. 
but our, our button here is save barcode. So we'll back up a little bit after the end of the delete the collection. We need to define that function fn save barcode. We've seen that several times. Click on something, run something, and the something is that function. So that function is going to be filled with the actual code that makes the barcode run. We can get a really good example uh, back on the website of the plugin. So Hopefully you didn't close it, because if we go back to the, the plugin's website uh, in the documentation, full example. I'm going to copy that in a moment, but um, this the way this works basically, we'll see here, cordova.plugins.barcodescanner, with then a dot .scan method. Opening parenthesis, going all the way down here. There is, uh, there are, the syntax of it is a callback function of a success, which they're calling result. See how it says function result. Uh, oftentimes we, we saw function success or function failure. So this is the code we're going to use in just a moment, but we have our guests. So let's save our work at this point, and we will shift gears for a moment. Yeah.